this is James Gaskin with Technologies Broke and How to Fix IT in Your Business. I'm talking today with Martin Olson, Product Manager for, in fact, all the products at Active Power. Martin, thanks for taking a few minutes. Thank you. And what kind of fascinating thing do we have, you have your hand on? What we stand in front of here is a uh, what we call the UPS flywheel system. Uh, so it's basically a your your, your legacy type of, of UPS system, three phase. It's a 300 kVA UPS. Instead of a bunch of batteries, a bunch of chemical batteries sitting on, on racks around it, uh, we basically have this flywheel here, uh, produces 250 kilowatt of, of energy, um, and it basically provides that with this one, one wheel that's spinning in here. It's a 600 pound uh, steel mass that we spin at about 7,700 RPMs. Obviously, it's not spinning at 7,700 RPMs now. No, that's correct. It's, uh, it's just very slow, slow spinning right now just to, to uh, you know, show how, how it works. Uh, it's magnetically levitated uh, when we spin it, so it sits in this uh, this cast cast here, and it, it's it's basically uh, it, uh, we we take we take all of the uh, vacuum out of it, so it spins in a, a free vacuum in here, um, and uh, the 600 pound now becomes a 150 pound load on the bearing when we spin it because of the magnets in it, uh, and that spins at 7,700 RPMs, that then provides to turn the 250 kilowatts. So in normal operation, uh, just like you have a trickle charge on your batteries. Uh, to, to uh, continue to charge your batteries, you use a little bit of energy to spin the wheel here. Uh, so it just works as a, just a wheel that we spin at all times. When we have a power outage, uh, we release the energy from the wheel and it spins on its own. It typically spins for about 15 seconds, which is plenty of time for any generator to start up. The generator typically starts within six or seven seconds, uh, which gives you more than enough time, obviously, to, uh, uh, to uh, move your loads from the UPS to, to the generator. The biggest uh, uh, challenge we obviously going through here is that uh, a lot of people use the 15 minute battery. Uh, they like that. Uh, the challenge with generators is always it's a motor. Uh, you typically only get one attempt to start it. So uh, 15 seconds is really more than enough for the generator to, to get up and running. The generators are better than they used to be. Generators are much, much better than they used to be, and especially with regular maintenance. Uh, you can, if you uh, run them at, at once, once a month or bi-weekly, uh, you want to put some load on them as well to make sure they run properly. Probably the one biggest thing that we see uh, as, as, as a problem with a generator starting it up is the starting battery. There's always a, a, a battery in the generator that starts it up. And we actually have another solution for that that we call GenStart. Um, that instead of a battery, we provide the energy from the flywheel. So when you have a power outage, we use energy from the flywheel not only to protect your load, but also to provide energy to the uh, engine starter on, on, on the generator. So that so way you're, you're backing up the backup generator. That's right. <laughs> Back like it up that. both. And the, this is a production flywheel just putting in for the display case, I take it? Yes, correct. We have deployed uh, about 1,600 wheels so far, uh, about 30... Uh, uh, 350 megawatt of, of power over the years. And there's some, some very big toroid cores on those cables. What are those for exactly? These here are CTs, current transformers, and they basically pick up uh, the uh, current running through the cables. Now the, the interesting thing about a, uh, a, a flywheel system is that it's a, obviously a mechanical system rather than a chemical system such as batteries. Now with a mechanical system, you can accurately predict and tell what's going on in the system. So for every revolution you have, we have over 180 telemetry points that we can monitor. So we can monitor the speed, monitor the temperature, we can monitor the wear and tear, we can monitor the current, the voltage, everything within the system. So a dynamic system like ours is much easier to predict what's going to happen when you finally have demand for that backup energy. Whereas with a battery, it's typically a uh, you measure the float voltage and you say, well, you make you make a, 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 a an educated guess and says, well, it le looks like things are working good. But when you have demand on the battery, you could have a failure and they could fail right there on you. And the flywheel, the 600 pound flywheel is not going to stop turning. That's right. It's not going to st stop turning just like that. Uh, you don't know. In, in fact, uh, what we do as well, this is a 300 kVA UPS flywheel system. Um, so within this little box, you have your uh, essentially your, your battery, so to speak, as well as your UPS, which is a very compact footprint, almost uh, a third of that of batteries. Yeah, because usually the big Liebert systems I see in the data centers are they're huge. Absolutely, they're they're, they're big. They uh, they're very heavy. Uh, they're big. With this one here, we. Uh, we have had customers where they already had built out the battery room, and we put these in along the walls, and, and they're trying to figure out what do we do with all this remaining space that we have now where we're going to put the batteries. They'll fill up the space. They'll fill up the space with racks and cabinets. That's how, yeah. that's how we help them with that. 
This how, does this, uh, how does this work price-wise in this battery? The, uh, a system like this, uh, you should probably expect about a 10 or 15 percent premium uh, up front when you, when you purchase it. Uh, and that's, that's more a function of just, it is uh, it's still newer technology than some of the other ones out there and we're still getting the volume behind it. Um, the the uh, return of investment is typically um, after about two, two and a half years. Uh, and that, uh, that really comes down to the efficiency. It is the most uh, energy efficient UPS on the market, 98%. Uh, which saves you a great deal of energy over a legacy double conversion. Um, it is also uh, the fact that you don't have to replace the batteries. There's no batteries replaced, right? Exactly. I imagine there's some maintenance items in the cabinet, but there is some small. Some maintenance items. It's more, again, it's a mechanical system, so it comes down to regular wear and tear on a flywheel would be a, 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 the bearing here that we have right here. Uh, that needs to be replaced. Uh, There's some control circuitry. Is that yes. control or just monitoring circuitry? Uh, that's a monitoring circuitry. Or we monitor the um, uh, RPMs on the system uh, as well as we monitor the, um, uh, the weight of the system. Uh, so we make sure that we always, again, that's part of the 180 telemetry points that we have, that we can monitor what's going on in the system at, at any point in time. And you put it, what did you say, 1,600 of these out already? 1,600 of these out already. And I I know Flywheel's had a big push, a big PR push a few years ago. They were going to put it in buses and all sorts of things, but they tended to disappear. Yeah. Are you guys the first with a commercial Flywheel system like this? Um, we, uh, we're not involved in any of that at this point. No, I mean for, the, for this. As I've not seen anybody deploy a Flywheel in anything. Uh, other, other than a, a you guys, yeah, yeah, it's, it, that's probably true. I mean, the, the, the data center market lends itself well to this, uh, you know, especially with the generators starting up quickly. Uh, it's just a very obvious application to put it into. Uh, there are other uh, of uh, some some newer startup companies that are looking at, um, especially in uh, train stations. You have the electric chain, trains coming in. As they break, uh, they basically spin up a wheel, and as the, the train takes off again. Uh, drains the, the uh, 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 flywheel again and it, it takes off with that energy. That way you, you, you prevent the spikes happening every time you have a train taken off. Uh, that works very well when you, uh, if you have it in with all the, uh, you know, the, the train stations, the companies, the transportation authorities, but uh, of course we don't and we kind of focus on a mission critical market here. Well, if you can reduce a, a 200 kVA, um, how big is this 200 kVA? 300, 300 kVA. You can reduce a 300 kVA battery backup system to this size, which is not about a, a rack and a half. Was it about 30 inches wide? 40 inches wide? Yeah, 45 inches wide. Yeah. That right there saves you some money. Exactly. Great. Well, this is Martin Olson, which is battery backup powered by 600 pound flywheel for active power at the AFCOM show in Dallas, Texas. Martin, thanks for talking to us. Thank you very much. And this has been James Gass with the Technology is Broken, How to Fix IT in Your Business. And who knew that fixing IT meant a flywheel? Thanks for watching.